corazón. Alright guys, welcome to a new episode of Tuner Status. I got my guy Truman here. He came down. Really honored. I appreciate you taking the time for coming down and hanging out with us today. 100% uh, man. I gotta say, I'm like honored to be here. Like I think you picked the wrong guy, but uh, you know, we'll see what I can do. We'll see what I can do. But no, I'm just super happy to be here, man. Super All right. All right. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the history. How did you, how did you get into videography and photography like what was it like picking up your first camera for you i mean for me it's funny like i've been interested in it since like day one uh you know back back way back when uh my dad he had like one of the old school like 80s over the shoulder sony mm -hmm. cameras like uh you know it, i loved watching movies as a kid and then when he pulled that thing out he's just like oh we can like this thing is like a movie camera and i was like we can do that here we can yeah. like make movies uh so i was like super fascinated with it and i got super into it so i was kind of using that to film whatever i can't even remember what i'd be filming back in the day like lego building blocks or yeah. something um and then my dad saw i was super interested in that so we, then he he bought me like a little eight millimeter mm -hmm. smaller canon camera i can't remember the name of the the, the model but I loved it to death, you know, yeah. like, like, you know, any family trip or whatever we did, you know, I was always like filming it. Like that, that was me. I was always behind the scenes, like making that's movies. So that was from day one. That's, that's what I was getting into. And it just went from there. So. All right. So now you evolve and you got your first camera. What bridged the gap for you going into now automotive with it? So it's funny, actually, like grown up, um, I was also super, not like super, super into cars, but my dad, he had a pretty cool collection of cars back in the day. Um, like he had a couple Corvettes, like C3s, mm -hmm. he had a Chevy Chevette, uh, Ford Galaxy. Um, like he had some super cool cars and I really appreciated that stuff when I was a kid um, and really enjoyed that. It wasn't until uh, we went to a Barrett Jackson event okay. that like that okay. world kind of suddenly combined. Like I never yeah. thought of combining the two until, mm -hmm. until we did that. And I think it was like 2013, 2014, something like that. So like a, plenty of years later, yeah. um, it was at that event. Like I didn't even have a camera with me. I just had my iPhone five and uh, yeah. <laughs> now you're dating it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and I was just, you know, it, it was not much quality going on there, but I was just having fun with it. It was okay. just like, you know, me getting creative with it, getting the angle, getting mm -hmm. down low getting the close-ups and stuff like that and um then i saw one i saw one dude who had like three four canon 5d mark threes with like yeah. six different lenses like the dude was decked in camera gear and i was like oh that's pretty sick so i kind of just like was talking to him i was just like mm -hmm. so like what's what's the deal with you here he's like oh i do this for a living you know i just go around to these like events and just do all the photography for it i'm like Yo, that would be sick. Like, that is the dream. Like, so hanging that was a decided factor for you right yeah. there. Just like, I, this is what I want to do. Exactly. I was just That's like, I'm, I'm so, like, this is, like, if I can, you know, I grew up doing the video stuff. I wasn't huge into photography. Like, it's, it's a fun, like, um, bonus that I get to do in photography mm -hmm. now. But I was just like, if I can do the video yeah. in cars, that would be sweet. So that's kind of like what I, 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 as soon as I got back from that trip, okay. that's what I set out to do. I had a good friend of mine, his name's Cody. Like he was a stock car racer mm -hmm. and he was into cars and uh, we were both doing the same uh, video production and marketing program in school. Okay. So I immediately, I reached out to him. And I was just like, hey, uh, it'd be cool if we could like team up and like do some videos on like cars. I don't know what we're gonna do, but yeah. we gotta do something. Yeah. And um, you know, at that, that, that time I, I kind of, uh, I saw like, uh, uh, crispy media uh, yeah. housing on a couple of the like I, I call them like the OG guys like the, mm -hmm. the the video YouTube guys. What up, guys? Yeah, I don't know. It's like those those guys really kind of inspired me as we were trying to like yeah. trying to figure out like what we were gonna film. Like I ran it. I just the timing couldn't have been better. Like YouTube. Like they didn't, they didn't even really do this back in the day, but like they recommended like yeah. one of their videos, like mm -hmm. out of out of nowhere. An H2O video or yeah. a random car feature. Yeah, you know, it was just it was, like it was dope seeing that. You know? It was just it was such inspiration, and I was just like, oh, I think I could do something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, man, I like I was I was a broke college student. I had like no money. I was working at a laundromat, making next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first big piece of equipment at the time when it came out was kind of revolutionary and. It's kind of paved the way for like a lot of shooting now, but it was the original 
uh, DJI Ronin, which is a stabilizer. Yeah. Like the original yeah. one, and this, I can't, I think, I think I found like a, I can't remember what they're going for like new, but mm -hmm. I remember I was searching eBay and I saw one for like two grand. Yeah. Like maybe 1900 bucks. And I was just like, okay, how do I, how do I, how do I get this? How, how do I make this, this work? So like, that's a big purchase. Especially it is. Back then, that's a big purchase. It is. I had seven, eight bucks in my bank account. I'm like, yeah. how do I suddenly get two grand to, to get this mm -hmm. piece of equipment? Cause I was just like, you know, like nobody else was, no, the, that space didn't really exist. Like, no, nah, it's it's different. You know, yeah, it, it, it was it was it was really the birth of that that era. You know, yeah, especially for what it is now. Exactly, so, exactly. Like, it's it's pretty accessible now, and it's which is great because I'm seeing a lot of like new creatives who are able to just quickly get into the space and create some amazing stuff. Yeah, but back then, like when you wanted to get like really quality rollers. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of really good gear for it. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the Ronin was like the first somewhat accessible thing, like for two grand, mm -hmm. it was either, like, I can't, again, I can't remember the, the new price. I think it was like maybe $25, $3,000. But the next thing yeah. for stabilized cameras was like five, 10, 15 yeah. grand. Yeah. So uh, it was somewhat accessible. So, you know, I, I grinded it out, called in a couple favors, I took out like a personal loan and I got it. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was it was a game changer, yeah. and I remember the first shoot we did that was like uh, using it on for a car shoot was uh, Cody's dad had just bought a uh, an awesome blue uh, 2015 C7 Corvette, mm -hmm. and we took that to this place in Rangeley, Maine, because that's where I originally am. I'm, I'm from is from Maine, yeah. And uh, it was this beautiful like mountainside like landscape area that we were just kind of cruising, and I stole my brother's. He had a 2006 Ford Explorer, mm -hmm. so the glass would pop out the back. So here I am, just hanging out the back and yeah, with man. the Ronin and, and getting the rollers, and that was our our very first car video, and uh, it was awesome. It, like, it, it, like you look at it dope. now, and I'm like, dude, that's what I was, I was making, it. bro. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man. But we all have those moments, you know. Got to start trust somewhere. Me, when I first started doing photos, and I was like, Shh, clarity slider up, yeah. sharpness <laughs> up, noise reduction up. I was just like, and now I look yeah. at it, I'm just like, what, bro? Quite a quite a transition, yeah, like, man, yeah. dude. Like, like. But we all start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. We all start somewhere. Exactly. So. Like that's that's just like it, it, there's so much like when it, it hits you all at once when you start because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I can do this, I can do this, and you get a little yeah. crazy with it, and then mm -hmm. you just kind of start to refine it. So, you know. But that that was our first video, and man, it it was awesome. Like I got such a rush from it. I felt like, wow, like I set out to like achieve like a look. Uh, and and we did it, and yeah. then we just started running with it. It was when uh, we we started the, the the social media page. It was called Wicked Motor Network, yeah. and uh, like we just were like, all right, what's next? And we just kind of went from there. So now you have your gear, you're getting the ball rolling, and you're networking. What was it like for you to either reach out for people or have people reach back out to you, and you know? say like, hey, I really want to start doing this. What was that networking aspect for you like? Honestly, it was kind of crazy just because again, back then it wasn't so common. Mm -hmm. um, like again, I'm from Maine, middle of nowhere. What we had access was a couple guys in like Honda Civics, like modded built out Honda Civics, which mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, it was totally cool. Uh, that's where we started and we made a couple videos and the ball just started rolling. Like it mm -hmm. just, I, I, never, I never really reached out to a whole lot of people. Um, it was just word of mouth, like, or people seeing the videos and saying, hey, I want something like that. And it just yeah. started kind of traveling south for us. Like, we started up middle nowhere, Maine, made our way to southern Maine and Portland, where there's a little bit more of a scene, you know, mm -hmm. people taking it a little more seriously. Got in there, made some great contacts, still some of my best friends yeah. in the car community uh, from there. Uh, and then it just kind of word traveled to Boston. And we met some guys in Boston with some, you know, higher end cars, some either really nice builds or some exotics and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And really, that's like main reason I'm sitting here is just because of that evolution. Like it's kind of insane. Our first big break was uh, a gentleman uh, reached out from from Boston. He's like, "Hey, I saw this latest video you guys did. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm going on this rally where there's going to be 200 other, you know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens, like really like that's high dope. end that's stuff." Dope. That's dope. Yeah, and it was for me, you know. And, and again, like I'm starting. You, you it's. Six months ago, mm -hmm. I was filming a Honda Civic, and yeah. like to to think like it got to to that yeah. like I, it, it just it just by making some of these videos it was crazy 
And so I met the guy who was putting it together mm. and he introduced me to the team of people who were putting it together. And that's actually where uh, I met one of, one of the greatest guys I've ever met. He's a hardworking dude. I love him to death. And he's kind of, he was my business partner for a while there. Um, I met him and he, he was super into the video stuff. He was like, mm. dude, this is so cool. Um, he had a couple of really nice cars himself. Yeah. And um, at the time, he was just like, I'm starting my own business. Uh, he, he had a bunch of other businesses. Yeah. But he's like, I'm starting a new business. And uh, he's like, I'd like for you to be uh, one of the marketing guys for it. And so he actually ended up giving me a job, which was in uh, southern New Hampshire here. So I literally packed up all my stuff and moved to New uh, southern New Hampshire mm -hmm. and was able to just be more in the community um, and, and do mm -hmm. this. So it was just crazy that like... The start of it was like, all right, I just want to make a couple car videos yeah. for fun, which ended up me networking and meeting people that started like a career yeah. and a new lifestyle for me, which is just insane mm -hmm. to think about. And there's some people that like really like jump started that for mm -hmm. me. Like I really, I haven't seen them in a long time since like COVID. I really want to go back and just thank them and be like, yo, I'm here doing what I am, doing what I'm doing today because of your, you, you just invited me out to this event. That's what's up. And so like, that's the, the power of networking. Like, it, it's just insane. Like, I, I've never been one to say like no to something. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Yeah. And what do you know, it's, it's led me here. Like, it was just, just crazy, so. So between the passion and the business, how do you find the balance of saying, you know, I don't want this to become too much work, but I also have to pay my bills. Like, where yeah. do you find that? Or where do you find the balance of saying, you know what? This goes against my moral standpoint. Yeah. I don't want to take this gig. How yeah. do you find the balance with that? Yeah, that's honestly like a really tough question. And we were talking a little about it earlier mm -hmm. was like the, 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 the burnout that mm -hmm. happens with this creative stuff. And it's really... It's burnout is really tough to like deal with because yeah. it's it's a mental thing that just kind of switches on, uh, not necessarily out of nowhere, but it's hard to explain it. It's not a physical thing that people can see it. So when yeah. you you're burnt out, you know everyone's just like, why why are you burning out? Like what you're doing is awesome. It's like not a whole lot of people are able to do it. Like you should feel lucky you can do it. Like yeah. why would you want to give up on it all of a sudden? But it's getting really common because a lot of the, like for example like creatives and YouTubers that I've seen that when I first got into the media space and I was following them and things like that, they're now I'm starting to see hitting that point and it's yeah. actually like a real thing. Yeah, it's it's really common. It's crazy you say that. Like there's a lot of people that I watch on YouTube that I look up to. Mm -hmm. A lot of them now are announcing like I'm either slowing way down or I'm done completely. Yeah. Like the, the, a lot it's of people have hit a breaking point. Weird. It's like you see them yeah. they're like, hey guys, I quit my job to go full time with this. And that was like four years ago. And now they're like, hey, I decided to pick up a nine to five just to get a break from this because I don't want to hate it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hate it. Which is, it, it, which, you know, when, when you're on the outside of it, it's crazy to think. It's like, mm -hmm. man, you had a dream set up. Like, how, what happened? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's hard to explain, but it does happen. And it, I, I, it's, it's happened to me. I mean, that was, that was a real tough thing. So um, when COVID happened, the, the marketing role I had in that business, that business shut down. Mm -hmm. So I then started a video production company mm -hmm. um, with uh, well, the, the car buddy. Uh, and we got it going and at first it was exciting. It was just like, yeah. wow, I'm starting a video production business. Mm -hmm. uh, one in COVID mm -hmm. and it's not easy whether COVID or not, COVID definitely didn't help, but yeah. like to get started in the video production space, just like out of nowhere, like, I, you know, I had some car friends, you know, and it was fun to do car projects, but it's like, if you, to, to, to pay the bills, you, you gotta do really like high end you can either do weddings uh corporate you know commercial yeah, stuff like that yeah. there's there's a few spaces that will really like pay the bills mm -hmm. and get you to scale it's 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 a grind to to make that work mm -hmm. and you know it was three years building it up at first was exciting you have some passion towards it but yeah it's tough um especially when it's your livelihood and you want to take a break mm -hmm. but you can't yeah because uh, there's a lot on the line, you know, mm -hmm. it's in it for me. It's I got a small team. It's it's like, you know, you got salaries, you got health insurance, you're paying rent, you, mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, gear's not cheap. It's not. It's not. And <laughs> you so real life stuff, yeah. you know, health insurance, everything. You know? Exactly. So it's just like so for me, it was really difficult. It was having that burnout and being like, I, I got I want to take a break, but you can't. 
mm -hmm. because it's it's you you start you you hit go on this and you invest um, in in yourself, which is yeah, the best thing you can do. It, it is the best thing, and and it's 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 tough to say when you want a break. Um, you, you can't necessarily get yeah. it. There, there's no option to take a break for me. Mm. So for me, it was just kind of getting creative, like on how to deal with burnout, because mm. um, it, it is it is tough to balance. Yeah. And that's the one thing I really like how it's again it's tough how it's set up because again I've got guys on my team who you know I pay them as best as I possibly can and we're yeah. always you know I'm always gonna you know we we split everything equally but you know it's on me to make sure that there's money for them to get paid every yeah. single week. Um, so, but that's the beautiful part of it was like, you know, you work as a team and you, you got to make sure that everyone, if, if somebody's feeling a little burnt out, then yeah. you got to rotate out and kind of pick up the slack. So that's mm -hmm. the one thing I appreciate about my, my team is that they've done an excellent job with that. Um, so that's the one thing that really kind of helped me kept going. Yeah. It's like, if you can't take a break, mm -hmm. then you got to surround yourself with some people who that can kind of help you out in that case. Yeah. But if you are kind of the solo filmmaker and need to take a break, it's just okay to do. Like mm -hmm. some people think the mindset is like, I got to keep going. If I stop or put it down now, um, and I've been there. I've been there. Just yeah. that that thought of like people are gonna pass me because mm -hmm. we talked a little bit a little yeah, earlier. Yeah, you got a little bit yeah. of competitive edge going. Everybody has, you know. And I mean, like I said, I don't want to, you know, shit on anybody, but I'm pretty sure some people felt that way about me too when they see some of my photos and they're just like. I could have smoked this guy on this set. You know, <laughs> we all hit that point, yeah. you know. But I mean, that's how you but grow a little bit. Exactly. Though. It's like, you, you see know, something, you're like, I can do that. Especially like how we said earlier, you know, the biggest enemy of myself is me. Is when you see your own photos from back then or your own media content that you created back then, you're just like, man, I could have, I could <laughs> whoop my ass right now. Like, because you've stepped up and you've evolved so much within the learning yeah. space. And, you know, and speaking about social media, how are you feeling about the evolution and growth? Because back then, it was such a small, limited space where there was only a handful of guys where you looked forward to their content. Yeah. And it was a lot more quality, whereas you were seeing full-length features of cars now. And now you're seeing everything down to 7 to 15 seconds. Yeah. Um, and I tested it myself. One of my more viral videos that I've seen, I just shot a video with my iPhone mm. and it's literally six seconds long and the video's at nearly 900, it's just over 900,000 views. Are you serious? And then I've had content where I've <laughs> been out there, try to learn, try to use the camera, spent time editing and it's just over 3,000 views. It, yeah. It's a weird space right now. Yeah. Um, no, it is. It is. And then now you have AI. How is it now being in a media space where your direct competitor is the iPhone 15? Yeah. And like, honestly, it's scary. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's scary. It's kind of frustrating because, um, like, I've always come from the background of, like, you know, quality over quantity. But mm -hmm. that's just not what this, this space is anymore. It it's a quantity game. Yeah. iPhone, nine second clips. Cap cut. Yeah, cap cut, dude. Just pump it out there. Yeah, it's nuts, dude. It's nuts because before, whereas like I used to be hit up all season long for photo shoots, now it's just I don't really need a photographer right now. Reels, it's what taking over, yeah. and I could just do it with my iPhone. And now I don't need to go to school for it because now you have all these AI yeah. video editing apps that's drop six clips and call it a day. How, exactly. How is it being in that space? Yeah, so I mean, that's that's kind of honestly why I had to get out of the space um, altogether. You know, I really had to take a break from doing all the car stuff because I had to just focus on building the business, focusing, you know, on the clients that that wasn't necessarily an issue. You know, mm -hmm. I, I clients who would come to me on my expertise on really storytelling and how to do that as professionally as possible mm -hmm. with the right gear yeah. um so that's kind of where i focused and unfortunately like it wasn't in the car scene because that's kind of yeah. what it all is is yeah. just that everyone can do G everything a-ok -okay with an iphone and, and kind of get the results and get that that viral clout that everybody's you know trying mm -hmm. to you know grab on so that's where i i just said like i i can't compete with this so i literally that's why i had to put it down yeah and um figure out maybe how could I compete with it? Mm. And it's it's interesting now, like I've got some ideas um, and I, I think really in ultimately, like you, you can do the, the like you said, that, that clip you did, 900,000 views. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. And it's really like the strategy, I think that 
that you got to kind of implement and be okay with is, is that will help you kind of grow mm-hmm. and help get to people that will appreciate you. Mm-hmm. And then the second part of that, I think really, and that's the content that I now want to go back and focus on in the car community or wherever else I'm passionate about making mm-hmm. films for is finding stories and the people that have an awesome personality yeah. that deserve to have their stories told. Like yeah, that really, that's, that's the key. Like, yeah. you know, and I feel likewise, man, it's the same goal like I have with Tuna Status. We went from events to photography and now just a space where people that are within the car community have much more to say than just a, a Drake caption. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Because there's no substance because before with the forums and everything like that, it's like, and I've said this several times, it's like with the forums back in the day, it's like you've seen the person post new mods, new updates, new headaches, new breaks, new fixes, all that stuff like yeah. that. So by the time you actually seen the person at a local car meet, or even if you went to a bigger show and you saw them, you felt like you already knew them already because yeah. you guys have been talking online so much. Now with social media, it's a caption and you don't have no idea what the person looks like. Yeah. You just know their car. So yeah. like it gets to the point where like people are talking about it, oh, do you know Kenny? And it's like, who's Kenny? It's like, Oh, he has the TSX wagon slammed on rotor forms. Yeah. And you're like, oh, him, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying to really eliminate that space where now people, their personality and their face is the forefront, and the car is just now an extension of their personality. Now you know why they built it that way, because, hey, this kid is wild, he's nuts. But, well, yeah. it makes sense why he's built like that. Exactly, you know, exactly. Like that. And that's, so, like, that's like what my favorite part about the, the car community is, is just people who really set goals to like make the car their own yeah. and like that's the stuff i admire so much that's a space like you know i'm i want to get into more like yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a novice i got a little bit of a project car but you know like to i love learning that that's my big thing i love mm-hmm. learning and, and getting inspired from other people and to see what people are able to come up with and build something that is so unique to them that's what i'm all about it's just like I feel like we've we've lost a little bit of that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I yeah, I would like to see mm-hmm. it go back into that direction. And well, it, they say it's everything tough. comes in circles. So that is we'll, true. We just got to catch you when it's the right time. That is true. Hopefully, I'm not too old. But yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I got to see it happen. Yeah, I got to so. see it happen at yeah. least once more time. Yeah. So we've talked networking. We've talked about you know some of being in that that rough space and the evolution of social media and things like that. You know. As we transition and we're watching these newer kids come up, is there anybody that you've seen that kind of caught your eye that's kind of like, I like what he's doing now? Like in terms of video content or builds video, or what they're doing? Video content. Video content. Yeah, no, there are a few people that I think are, are really doing a good job. Like they're making some, some for me, eye-catching content. Um, again, it comes down to a little bit, though, of... And I'm not bashing on it. Again, it's super good quality. Mm-hmm. They're setting out to do something, and they're doing it, and they're they're getting success with it. Like they're getting the views, yeah. they're they're getting the attention it deserves. Mm-hmm. Um, but and and I haven't done a huge scan, but yeah. you know, a lot of the the, the guys I've been seeing and following, and I get updates from. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, it's like, and this is why I kind of stopped. It was because you kind of just hit a brick wall, um, doing that kind of content over and over and yeah. over again. Of like. This is, you know, flashy, it's cinematic, it looks good, mm-hmm. but, like, what's what's the story? Like, what are you telling? Yeah. Like, what's, what's the personality? Kind of going back to what we were just talking mm-hmm. about of, like, like I kind of want to get to know more. Like, why does this person have this car? What are they up to? Like, yeah. like I, 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 I kind of want to invest in a story mm-hmm. and, and learn more about what these people are up to. And that's stuff mm-hmm. I haven't been seeing. But there, there are a lot of good people out there that... Um, have just been making just it, it's flashy and it looks really good yeah. so it definitely catches my eye for, yeah. for a few seconds um now are there any content creators that kind of inspired you in the beginning like i know you mentioned you know crispy and you yeah. know and uh and uh chris and halcyon halcyon yeah, yeah, yeah is there anybody in the newer space that you see because i watch a lot of content creators i watch like north borders i watch yeah. manny ot's and yeah and a few other uh youtube content creators and photographers is there anybody that you've watched on social media that um, you just kind of just like wow I like. this is this is really random but in our space for video it, it, it in photography mm-hmm. um it's been actually really interesting um there's a gentleman his name's luke forsyth i don't know if you've yeah heard. yeah 
He, like, (laughs) honestly, dude, like, the thing I like about him is that, like, he does such a good job of, like, behind the scenes on, Mm -hmm. like, what it takes to be just kind of in the video space. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of the YouTuber guys, there's a lot of kind of trend following Mm -hmm. where I feel like he's just kind of more down to earth and he's just like, "This this is the realism of what it's like being, you know, a video guy or a content creator. Mm -hmm. And he he just does such a great, like, deep dive into, like, just the business side of it. Like, you know, how to, you know, if you're in a, you're going against a wall of like, how come I can't like push through and really make this video thing work? He's got so many good things of advice to think about of like, this is why you're not suddenly like being successful in this industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's stuff like that, that uh, I really appreciate. And he's one guy that I've just been glued to. Anytime he comes okay. up with a new video, I'm like, what do you got for me today? Cause yeah. I need that insight. Yeah. Like it's, it's super helpful, even though some, maybe some of the stuff I already know, but it's just like, it's such a unique perspective. And again, that's the stuff I, I kind of look for. So. All right, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the one question I've been getting more as my work's been getting uh, acknowledged more by other people, and I see them more as I'm doing shoots and, you know, on set and things like that, I get the question from a lot of beginners, what am I using? And I tell them, like, well, what I'm using, honestly, and I tell this to anybody, it's really overkill yeah. for the social yeah, media yeah, space, yeah, yeah. or depending on what you want to do. But somebody who's starting up and wanting to get a cin- cinematography, what do you recommend is kind of like a starter pack? Yeah, it's so funny you ask this, because um, over you know, um, with my team, we made a little video and we're editing it right now. It's mm-hmm. if we had to start this company over um, with $5,000, what would we get? And in my head, I was like, $5,000 is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, this should be easy to come up with a basic kit. Yeah. Suddenly, it wasn't that, like, you know, for, <laughs> I, 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 suddenly, I was really struggling to stay under that $5,000 limit because yeah. me being me and all the stuff I get, I'm like, wow, I, I kind of need this, I need that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the tough thing because it's like, there's so many ways, so many avenues in video. Mm-hmm. And like, you, you kind of see, see it in the videos of like people making recommendations, but then they kind of backtrack and they're like, but it really depends on what mm-hmm. you're doing. Like, what I'd recommend might not work for somebody who's getting into weddings uh, or this or that, but you know, for for like car stuff, like, I, you know, what I would, and really this this gear like kind of works any, anyways, but have you seen the new Osmo Pocket 3? I have the Osmo Pocket too, and I, I I'm thinking about getting a three. I've seen it. Honestly, like that's not a bad set, dude. I've seen the mounts. Somebody had like a, did a mount on the outside of the door yeah. and it caught the angle of the driver, yeah, and I was yeah. just like, no way. And it's shooting 4K, and I'm just like, that's nuts. Honestly, so I've used it a couple times, mm-hmm. and I can get that footage from the Osmo Pocket three to look exactly like my FX three. Mm-hmm. Like the quality is insane. Um, so that's the one thing, and it, again, it really depends on what you're doing, but yeah. like, me, like, when I was even starting out, and I still kind of have this goal of like, what is, for me, I'm always trying to be mobile. Yeah. Like I find, and again, I'm always trying to do documentaries or videos that are so run and gun and on, like, just like off the cuff, like the more mobility I have, like the gear that can just quickly work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, is the gear to get. So honestly, I really like the Osmo Pocket 3 as like, if you really wanna, if, if, you're fo- if you wanna grow from your phone, which your phone is a great place to start. Yeah. Honestly, that is the starting point. Just yeah. on your phone, taking videos, and learning how to edit that phone footage. Cause a lot of people mm-hmm. start with their phones, they've got like two to three minute video clips, mm-hmm. and they just kind of throw them up there, and it's just like, well you got like two to three minutes of stuff that, it's not really interesting. You gotta learn how to yeah. edit edit it down and tell a story off of that. So once you kind of get that and then you kind of want to expand and get in a more diverse or you know better quality, you know, I, mm-hmm. I'm always looking for stuff that's mobile. Um, yeah. And the Osmo Pocket 3 I think is great. Uh, you know, Sony gear is good if you really want to go out there. But um, yeah, no, there's a lot of small little kits out that exist that mm-hmm. will get pretty close to the professional yeah. Sony gear mm-hmm. and Canon gear that, that we use. So. I would say if I'm starting out right now, I would get the uh, Osmo Pocket 3 and yeah. the Crater Pack that comes with a, a DJI mic mm-hmm. in it as well. So um, you got good video quality and you got good audio quality. Yeah. And those are the two. Lighting is like the next big yeah, factor into it. Like and that's a whole different thing. But those two things alone is 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 really just what you need 
to start telling stories and working mm -hmm. on on that because that's really the most important thing is mm -hmm. you learn how to edit and tell a story and that's going to make the most engaging content. Mm -hmm. So that's that's All my right. thought. Oof. Yeah. Uh, next on the uh, checklist. Yeah. <laughs> what is uh if you I'll keep it short and simple. Um, and I don't know if shorter is also simple. Yeah, I know. That's uh, the, that's my issue. It's like I can't <laughs> summarize it up in five minutes. Like, you, you, you got to do like a 12-hour seminar with me on some of this stuff because I can just go into it. But, yeah, all right. All right. So to summarize it up, uh, I'll keep it simple. We could either do top three or top five. Okay. Now that you know what you know, what would you say are the top three or five mistakes when you decide to go into the creative business? <sighs> like some real yeah. big yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah, the, the big thing is, the, yeah, I'll start from three and work my way up to one. Okay. Uh, so the big thing is, is getting a little too comfortable with the gear you have. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of this new gear is really cool and it's almost automated. Like mm -hmm. there's some settings that you can kind of just switch it into and not have to worry about it. But you start to get too comfortable and you start to rely on that. And suddenly that feature doesn't really work the way you wanted it to. No, shoot. And you know, <laughs> you're, you're out of luck there. You're out of luck. So I think mm -hmm. that that's been, yeah, like one of my issues is that, you know, again, a lot of the stuff is run and gun is uh, you're like, okay, I'm going to switch that on. I'm going to put that into auto and, or I'm going to just have this go in and it should be fine. It should yeah. be fine. And then you come back and you find out, oh, it was not fine. Yeah. You know, you, you got, you, you got your audio settings that you think are going to be auto limiting and making sure they're not peaking or you got auto exposure on one of the cameras and or you know what whatever else mm -hmm. uh so i always try to make it a deal oh, of the like auto exposure was a killer for yeah. me man i was looking at some footage <laughs> one time i was like why is it going light or dark or auto focus yeah. when you're trusting yeah yeah you, and then it's like focusing on the hand in the face and hand in the face exactly. it's just like exactly. dude what the hell so i was just like you know what we're gonna rock this in manual focus yeah you know? exactly and that that's something like it's a good skill set to have mm -hmm. um because in some ways, it looks more professional when you do yeah. some manual focusing yeah. stuff, and you're you're, you're oh, you know you're you're making sure that everything's tack sharp, and again, not mm. leaving it to the to the camera or the device to do its auto feature. Yeah, is I'm gonna take a little bit extra time, really in my head, go down that checklist and say, all right, focus check, manual uh, audio check, mm -hmm. color temperature, you know, just 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 taking the extra time to do this instead of rushing, be like, I gotta get this done, I gotta get yeah. gotta get this done. It's Cause, Take your time and do it right. Because I made that mistake. Like when I first started, I was all about the YouTube videos. Oh, this new lens drop. This th I've spent so much money on. All right. <laughs> I started off Ooh. with the LaShawn gave me an A6000, literally just handed it to me. It was like, hey, I'm tired of hearing you talk about photography. Use it. And shut up. Yeah. You don't use it. <laughs> put it back in the case. Yeah. And shut up. So I was rocking with that. I finally got to use it. I was like, you know what? I'm a. I'm gonna take this serious. I'm gonna get my own camera. So I picked up an A7 II and I picked up an open box 50 millimeter lens, Sony yeah. F. Because everybody was like, start off nifty 50. Nifty 50, man. Yeah. So I was like, classic, all right, cool, let's classic. go with that. But then it was Sigma 35, another Sigma 35 1 2. Then it was the 24 to 70, and then it was back to the 35. And then I picked you up. You like 35s, a, huh? Dude, and yeah. I picked up a. Um, a G Master, it was my first G Master, the 24 millimeter G Master. I freaking loved that thing. Nice, nice. Then I ended up trading that, and then I got a Sigma 24 to 70. And then, because I was bouncing back between zooms, but I felt like the zooms made me too lazy with my shots because it was just easy just to zoom in and out instead yeah. of using my feet. And then all of that money spent just to end up with a 50 millimeter G Master F1.2. I'm right back at 50. And I remember, and That's I'll never forget. That's a good 50 to have, though. That's a good 50 to have. I remember LaShawn telling me, he was like, before you buy anything, learn your gear and understand your gear. Yeah. Because if I had just learned my gear and understood how to use my camera, I wouldn't have need to do all that. Yeah. I would have just probably got stuck with the 50 and then probably got a decent zoom lens, like a 70 or 200 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, or just gone wide and then have a 70 or 200. But... 
that was definitely a mistake for me. Yeah. I spent way yeah. too much money on some <laughs> stuff I didn't need. It, it was bad. So now yeah. we're at number two for you. Number two. Number What's two. Number two? Uh, number two is really, really just like understanding uh, people better, I think. Like, the video is is team effort. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you can do it solo, but if you want to like, you're always looking to scale and get bigger and do bigger projects. Mm -hmm. You got to start bringing people in to help yeah. you out. Oh, well, I'm um, learning that now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm learning that now. If I had an audio guy, and I, <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I'd yeah. love just to have an audio guy following me around yeah. 24 seven. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's it's it starts to turn into a very big collaborative space. And you know, my thought process was back in the day was all right. We'll just you know, someone who's generally interested in video, I'm gonna assume that they know everything and just put them on something that they might not be comfortable with, but assume that everything's cool. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that doesn't work. No. So that's the big thing is really. Like again, taking the time to community, just chat with people and be like, what are you, what do you focus on? What are your strengths, and mm -hmm. how can I make, um, how can I get your strengths in on the project instead yeah. of just assigning you to something that I think you'd have some general info on and that doesn't really work out. It's like, all right, you know what, what do you have? Either that's gear or skills or something that you're you're passionate about, like the it factor. Uh, you know what's something that I can get you in on that you can excel at um so that's something i've been trying to really pay more attention to and okay. it, it's, it's been like ever since i had that mindset mm -hmm. it's been just it's been it's been great it's okay. been great so that's that's been a big game changer with mm -hmm. the bigger projects and collaborating is just making sure that everybody's in like a space and a position to like do the best job okay so yeah okay. yeah it's been number two so, cool all right so now the big one number one What's number one? So number you? one, and I've been working on this for like four years ever since we started. And I yeah. still like I got a long way to go, but that mm. is organization. Okay. In general, like I can relate. I yeah. Can relate. <laughs> it <laughs> it doesn't take much for things to just be out of control if you're not organized in in with video yeah. production and photography. Like, yeah. Like what what, you, what some experiences you got where it's just like oh Dude, this is this. I, uh, if people were here right now, they would know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's nuts. Uh, even when you think you have everything ironed out and well mannered and prepared and you don't want to put yourself in a space where you're freaking out too much, but it does not hurt to have just a checklist. Yeah. That's what I've learned to do is just have a checklist before every shoot. Um, knowing the location, knowing the weather, knowing because I've had days where I've woken up and been like, hey, yeah, I'm meeting up with this guy on Saturday and then I didn't check the weather and it's pouring right yeah now we got to switch venue switch location yeah. got to switch gear gotta and all on the fly you didn't plan yeah. for a plan b you didn't mm -hmm. get organized for for if that were to happen what's yeah. next you know no mm -hmm. contingency plans yeah mm -hmm. and it's uh yeah this is a space if like if you're not organized and you're not in the thought of being like all right plan a b c like all getting all this stuff laid out you can get messy real quick yeah and yeah. Uh, you don't want to look that you don't want to look you know kind of unorganized or last minute planning to yeah, a client dude. that's, you know, giving you a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Like you, it, it's, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a situation yeah. you don't want to be in. Exactly. Exactly. So it's something that's just like, it is really important. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that this, and, it, and again, it's tough. Like we were saying, like everybody wants stuff quick for yeah. social media, video. They're like, we need to be posting 10 things a day, you know, 20 times a week, mm -hmm. every day. Like, the demand is is heavy to compete uh, with social media and how fast everybody wants to get out content and things to people. No. So you're rushing around, but before start things start to really hit the fan, mm -hmm. it's like you got to stay organized and on stuff because it doesn't take much. Like one one horror story, like I I had. Um, luckily, it wasn't for a you know client or anything like that. But we were rushing around. You know I. Sometimes, you know, we'll have three, mm -hmm. four, five shoots a day Jeez. and I'll have people going out or, mm -hmm. you know, I'll be, I try to do as much as I can. Like we'll, we'll have a lot of, we'll have busy days. Yeah. And I remember one time, you know, we were just, I wasn't organized. We we're falling behind schedule. I was kind of rushing, you know, transferring footage, mm -hmm. trying to get things back out, get gear in. And I accidentally somehow transferred the same card twice. So there was one camera with one card mm -hmm. that had a lot of critical footage on it that I, you know, I'm thinking, all right, I transferred all the media, we're good. Yeah. I didn't 
double check, I didn't do the proper footage organization to it, and then come to find out two weeks later when I go to edit, I got two of the same camera angles and not the second one, and I'm just like, oh my god, wow. So that was kind of a wake up call for me. I was yeah. just like, we, we did, it's not sustainable. Like I, I gotta spend more effort just like taking deep breaths, saying, hey, are we organized on this? Because mm -hmm. we things can go south again real, real quick. quick. So, real quick. Yeah. So stay organized. You, mm. you, you think, oh, you know, video. Like, is there really a lot to manage? Yeah. And there is, there and is. at first maybe there's not as much, mm -hmm. but you start scaling and doing more work in the video industry. Yeah, it can get, it can get, it can it get, get uh, yeah, I'll, and, and out of control real quick. Because you, know, you put yeah. a lot of pressure on yourself to maintain yourself at a certain bar, and you know, a lot of these things they go off that old saying, the first impression. And when you have a client or anybody who's sitting there, you know spending their time with you, not only just their money, you want to respect their time as well. Yeah. So you want to be as efficient and, you know, professional as possible with your client. Yeah. Um, now, as we hit this last segment, I usually generally ask my guests two questions. One being, what do you feel was the best year for you? in the cinematography, videography space, where you were just out there, excited, everything was flowing, and you was just on a real high? I gotta say, for me, I think everything was clicking in 2017. That was like, I was on cloud nine. You're like the fourth guest. Everybody oh, yeah. was like 2016, 2017. Golden Everybody, age. Yeah. We didn't even know we were in a golden age, yeah, but man. it was a golden age, man. Yeah. Dude. yeah, you know, it was, that was an amazing year. Even though I wasn't doing, I, I was doing video full time. I didn't have my own business. Um, honestly, cool. Fine with me. Yeah. Uh, it, it just, things were just awesome. Like the, the car scene, what mm. I was getting into, I it had a huge passion for it. I was mm -hmm. having so much fun with it. And then even at work, like, it was a kind of a crazy schedule. Like I'd come down to Boston to go to events, yeah. do some filming. I'd leave, you know, I'd stay the weekend, get back Sunday night, midnight, get to work, you know, 6 a.m. and then just rinse and repeat. Yeah. Um, but it was it was awesome. You know, the stuff I was doing at work was insane. Like uh, we were doing, and this could be a whole nother episode if we really wanted to get into it. It might have to be for a different podcast, mm -hmm. but you know, I was, uh, at the time I was kind of traveling the world doing documentaries for uh, a client, for yeah. somebody full time. And so I was going to places like, you know, uh, Europe, like Amsterdam, um, Latvia, going to Russia. I was going to Israel. I was going, you know, That's South dope. America. Like yeah. I was doing all these shoots and then I'd be back, you know, back in the U.S. doing car stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was so much fun. Like yeah. it was just a good time. Like, uh, yeah, I'd say that that was the year, like everything was just working. And I got my, I got my dream car that year. Yeah. Um, and it just. Which was? Uh, it's a 78 Datsun 280Z. Uh, it, like for some odd reason, that was just a car mm -hmm. I really wanted. Um, like when I was playing uh, Forza, it was in the, one of the Forza games, and I was looking at it, I'm like, it's kind of it's like a sleek little yeah. car. I kind of like that. And I just started hunting for them, and uh, it's kind of I, I kind of lucked out because prices have gone up a little bit for yeah. those the first gen Z's. And uh, yeah, I found a clean one out in, in California, and I was just like, all right. That's mine. Let's just do it. That's and it's, it's just, I still have it and I, I love it to death, even though it's not fast. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you redline that thing yeah. at 7,000 RPM, doesn't matter if exactly. it's fast or not. You're exactly. having a great, great exactly. time in that thing. Like, so I love that thing to death. That's, that's my, my great little uh, dream car. So I got that that year and mm -hmm. everything else was great. So 2017, like, right. hands down. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Now, second and final question before we cut out of here, and like disclaimer, like I said, everybody don't want to be morbid. We're not trying to speak things into existence. But what's something that you want to be known for and acknowledged and respected for within your space? Something that says like this is this was you. See, it's it's crazy. That's like a really good question. That's like such a crazy perspective. Mm. I've never thought about it. Is the mm -hmm. thing like I? It's it's interesting because, yeah, you, I mean, you're in go mode all the time. Mm -hmm. You're thinking like, all right, this is what I get ready for tomorrow. This is what I get ready for next week. 
what am I doing it all for? Like, what am I trying to, mm-hmm. you know, make people think? Um, man, that, that is a great question. What do I want to be known for? <sighs> Honestly, yeah, no, I think I want to be known... Just somebody who's like, honestly, like, just somebody who's who's genuine, mm-hmm. like that. That's that's it. Um, which has been, which has been tough. Yeah. Um, the last four years, especially. Like I just, I, I, I like to think of myself as just like a cool go with the flow, like somebody who understands people, mm-hmm. and just I want to be there for everybody. Um, when you're in a business space and you got to make tough decisions. Mm-hmm. You don't come off that way sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's tough. So you know when and I'm you know when you're the boss, you know sometimes you don't yeah. get the best light on yeah. that. Um, but yeah, like I just want to be someone that's just like genuine and just has like always been wanting to be in whatever space I'm in to just have fun doing mm-hmm. it. Like you know someone that was just never said no to anything and was always for it and just like do whatever it takes to get it done and have fun doing it. Uh, yeah. Like if I can like, anytime I see somebody or, you know, like hanging out with them and they're like, I like the, I like the energy that yeah. he had and the, the, the positivity to just make whatever happen. Like, you know, I think the world mm-hmm. needs more people like that. So Definitely. if I can do it, cool. If I can be remembered for that, cool. It takes a lot of work. Yeah, it does. To get yeah, there. It does. But it does. It that's, does. That's, that's, but it's that's all part like of the process. Try. It's yeah. all part of the process. Yeah. But once again, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time, um, including <laughs> all the stuff that's happened behind the scenes for you guys. Bloopers would be crazy. Yeah, I, but, bloopers would be crazy. But um, yeah, it's, it's all part of the process. But really do thank you for taking the time of your day and come down and really come hang out with us over here at Tuna Status. And... Um, yeah, put all the information. Where can they find you online? Yeah, so uh, OS Media is the uh, the video production company. OS Media US on Instagram mm-hmm. or OS Media on Facebook. And then the car stuff, which I'm kind of excited is going to be making a little bit of a comeback. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wicked Motor Network uh, yeah. on, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, there's plans for it. There's okay. plans in the works. Um, so I'm really excited to, mm-hmm. I'm finally kind of refreshed. We talked a little bit about it, but, um, I'm, I'm finally going to get back into kind of the car nice. space, more focus nice. on it and, uh, really, really make some unique content. So, uh, yeah, make sure to check that out as well. Cause big stuff happening soon. I don't normally always say big stuff yeah. happening soon, but, but I'm going to deliver on that. There's big stuff happening soon. over All there, right, so. cool. We'll be yeah. waiting for it. We'll be yeah. waiting for it. All right, guys, so the te- next time you guys know the vibe, stay up, stay blessed. Peace.